So you're looking for some free map assets for your Foundry Virtual Tabletop game? Well, we're going to cover a lot in this video, so stay tuned. What's up gamers? I'm Josh and this is Copper Dragon Games. On this channel we talk about Dungeons and Dragons, from virtual tabletop resources to DM tips and product reviews and more. Today we're focused specifically on free art assets that you can download for your Foundry Virtual Tabletop games. If you love Foundry Virtual Tabletop as much as I do, you may enjoy the resources I've collected in the link above. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my future videos. But enough of that, let's talk about the artwork. Today we're going to do a brief overview of 15 different add-ons for Foundry Virtual Tabletop that include things like battle maps and town maps and that sort of thing. Lots of mapping resources that'll save you time and make your game look awesome. But with all that said, let's jump right into it. So I do want to point out that I have only picked one from each artist's map pack. Uh, some of these map packs have dozens of maps included, and I will not take the time in this video to go into detail on each one. If there's interest and you want to see me take a deep dive to showcase one or more of these artists, feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know which ones you want to see more of. But I would encourage you to just go to their add-on page and check out the artwork yourself. The primary reason for that is, for the purpose of this video, I've disabled almost all of my other add-ons. You can see with the logo here that I still have Token Magic Effects uh, active so that I could highlight that, but otherwise I've turned almost everything off. Some of these artists have shared maps that are very add-on friendly, and they may incorporate some add-ons that a new user might not have installed yet. So I, in a similar fashion, have disabled all of mine, both to make this video friendlier to new users but also to not do a disservice to any of these map makers. I would hate to showcase one set of maps with all the perks enabled and make it look much more fantastic than its neighbor in the video uh, when I just didn't have the right combination of add-ons downloaded and installed. Uh, to show off a, a particular artist at their best ability. Instead, I'm showing off the base level for everyone, regardless of what add-ons you have installed. Um, this is the low bar of what you can expect from each of these artists and their map packs. So, that being said, let's jump in and look at some maps, shall we? We're starting out with the BaileyWiki Maps Pack. Uh, BaileyWiki does some amazing work, uh, mostly, if not all, in Dungeon Draft, and also has a thriving YouTube channel that I would encourage you to go check out. He does some uh, great tutorial videos and things. I have actually referenced him and linked to him in a couple videos prior to this one, and I'll do so again in the top corner. Um, just great work going on the, over there. Uh, but we're going to take a quick look through of this map. This is the, the church. Uh, it's one version of the church. This is the uh, brighter, holy version of the church that comes with the free map pack. He's got plenty of other resources in the free map pack and also some Patreon resources. I'm not a member of his Patreon, but I have used his free content on occasion, and it is amazing. I've also learned a lot from his YouTube videos. One of the cool things about BaileyWiki's uh, map packs is that you get multiple floors of the same building on the same level. You see here we have the main level and then an upper floor and then the roof itself down here. And then we also get like catacombs under the church, which is pretty cool. Um, I particularly like that there are these optional bits down here. Uh, you could take these, for example, and replace some of these corner pieces if you want to change the style of, of what's going on under this church. Next up, we have Siora's maps, tokens, and assets. We start out with the Cave of Wonders, which I picked because I love this artwork. I love the reference to Disney's Aladdin. I also do some D&D uh, dad videos where I talk about playing D&D with my daughter. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I'll put a link up above. 
this is the kind of map that would be great to use with kids, especially those who may have seen Aladdin and recognize this scene. This is kind of like the perfect setup for a sweet dungeon adventure that is not just like exploring some random cave in the mountains. This is a, a an intrinsically magical location that only the diamond in the rough can get in without being swallowed just by the entrance. And then that there are so many amazing treasures within that adventurers would want to go in and, and find their fate, find their fortune. Very cool maps here. Next up, we have Jack Carax. Ugh, animated maps. I want to pause here and just apologize to any of these artists whose names I mispronounce. I probably mispronounced the last one as well. Um, but if somebody knows the correct pronunciation, feel free to throw that down in the comments as well. Um, apologies to those artists whose names I'm butchering. Uh, anyway, this is a, a sweet little set of maps. Each of the maps that Jack offers is animated. If you zoom in a lot, it, it gets a little pixelated and, and not great, but because of the scale, you're not going to be using these maps zoomed in that much. And so uh, you can see here it, with the default Forgotten Adventures tokens that come with Foundry, you can see that the art styles are not the same, but there's not such a huge difference in quality that, uh, that it's super distracting. I do like how the water is animated. This little uh, rabbit over here is animated. I love that there's a bird that like flies across the screen every so often. The only thing that I don't like about this particular map is that I can't imagine this rabbit just chilling on the the stone here chilling on that boulder and not getting spooked and running away if we say roll initiative and start combat on this map which is what we do on a lot of uh, battle maps like this so having a creature that uh that, that is part of the map itself part of the animation is kind of a drawback here but i don't think that's the case for all of his maps so uh maybe this was not the best example to use but uh, but if you're going to use Jack's maps, uh, keep that in mind. But overall, uh, amazing quality. I, I love the way these look. They bring uh, a sense of the map being alive uh, to your tabletop, and that's really sweet. So next up, we have DeMille's Wondrous Works. Uh, and I picked the Big Booty Boat, which is a name that just... How do you say that and not chuckle I, I don't know anyway uh but it's the big booty boat and i love how this map comes with the lighting effects already set up for the map i mentioned earlier that i had all my add-ons disabled um, but this is one of those core foundry features the lighting effects that you don't have to do anything fancy to set up you don't have to install an add-on there are some add-ons that modify it but this comes standard. So even with all the add-ons disabled, you can download this map and, and open it and you'll have these lighting effects. Now I do want to point out that with this map, I had to raise the lighting when I opened it. By default, it is a very dark scene, which makes sense with the lanterns on and everything. But even for a night scene, it was a little dark for my taste. Either way, that's easily adjustable in the configuration settings. Uh, you just go to configure and uh, change the uh, darkness level. So I believe by default, this was like almost all the way up, but this is still a super cool set of artwork. The style is, is great. The lighting effects being included is great. And it's got a name that you can giggle about, I suppose. Next up, we have Dragonfire Maps, an example here, which is the Blacksmith Shop. It is a pretty small map, but this is one of those where I mentioned earlier, uh, BaileyWiki puts multiple levels on the same page, whereas this particular artist uh, will put them on different scenes. So they use things like multi-level tokens to help with the transitions, and I'm pretty sure that's what this is set up to do. But again, I'm not reviewing that functionality. 
You can download this and use it as is. You don't have to have multi-level tokens activated. But I love how much detail uh, is in this map. It's got the blacksmith shop here, uh, which your PCs are likely to come into and, and do some shopping. But if they ever have an opportunity to explore the rest of the house, they're going to find this little... Uh, well, I guess it's not little. That's pretty big. There's a uh, there's a teddy bear on the couch. That's interesting. Um, there's a there's a washroom with a full bathtub. That's interesting. All these cool little like storytelling details that you don't find in a lot of of town maps. If you are really interested in having a generic map that you can add flavor to after the fact, then then that might be a drawback here. But I love that, I mean, I mean, I keep coming back to the teddy bear. Like, what does that say about this blacksmith? Is the, the, does, does this blacksmith just have a really childlike heart and love teddy bears? Is there a kid who lives here? Uh, what's the kid like? How could the kid be related to the, to the adventure? There are just so many storytelling opportunities that come out of these little random details that are just often not present in a generic town map where they're trying to make it very generic and applicable regardless of what like fantasy setting you're using this takes it a step further and says you know what this could fit in a generic fantasy setting but also the characters who live here are characters and here are some details that you can use to expand on them and, and i find that really uh, refreshing and, and a really cool um bit about these maps that that makes me want to use them more in my games next up we have meditating monkey and this goes kind of opposite of the previous map where we talked about having detail and adding character that a dm can expand on just from the images in the map and you can see this uh, dungeon area dungeon cave ruins number one is uh pretty bear. Uh, I mean, you've got some flames and things here, but most of these side rooms are pretty empty except for the occasional rubble. And if you're looking for a map that is uh, kind of a blank slate for you as a DM to fill in the gaps, something like this is perfect because it gives you the structure without filling in many of the details. There are some. Uh, you've got these columns here, you've got the flames. And that being said, this dungeon, even though a, a great deal of it is kind of a blank slate, it has a centerpiece. It has a set piece that kind of pulls it all together um, and, and makes it more interesting than just a generic dungeon map. So you've got down here uh, near the bottom of the map as your players travel southward, you have this really interesting door that is already set up as a locked door. And you have this super interesting thing. I, I don't know what this is supposed to be, to be honest, but it makes my imagination run wild. I don't know if this is a portal to another dimension uh, or to another plane, I guess in D and D terms, is this a, um, is this actually an orb that's floating over a pool of something I, I don't know we're we're 2d here and looking at it from above so we don't know for sure but i can see this being described many different ways and it being the the centerpiece a set piece that is central to an epic encounter in this space now this is mcwewa maps pack uh, another name that I'm probably butchering, and I apologize. But anyway, um, I, this map style is, is very simplistic. Very, uh, al it has almost that cartoonish look. It's not my favorite. Th this map has merit, but I, for my own games, I don't really use the more cartoony maps typically. I have gotten so used to the uh, Gabriel Pickard and Devin Knight combo that the cartoonishness of artists like uh, the Forgotten Adventures group and Tom Cartos, for example, that that's about as cartoony as I go with my maps. But that being said, this map has merit. I love that, that there is so much elevation change in the same 
small, relatively small area. I can see this being used with some add-ons that let you modify visibility based on the height of a certain area uh, being really interesting and, and having a combat where even though it's a relatively small map, you can't see all the, the combatants. There's a big feature in the middle. Uh, really interesting map. I like it. Uh, like I said, it's just not the style that I tend to use in, in my games. Next up, we have Miska's Maps, and this is the Iron Golem Workshop. And this is the kind of place where, where you can picture some kind of like Frankenstein-esque villain, some kind of weird artificer that's building these golems and, and getting them ready uh, to either guard their tower or, or whatever the case may be. I, I can see this being an awesome location to be used in the game. I do want to point out Miska's Maps. Within this set, there are lots of sci-fi set pieces and, and things that you don't find in a lot of the other groups. So if you're looking for sci-fi themed maps, you definitely want to check out Miska's maps because there are lots of offerings within this bonus pack. This is one of those cartoony art styles that I don't typically prefer for one of my games, but it is, uh, it's very well done. I love how the lighting is already incorporated. It makes it very easy for DMs who are trying to get a map on the board with very little setup time that still looks really sweet and takes advantage of some of the perks that you get in Foundry but that you don't get in a lot of other virtual tabletops. Next up, we have Moonlight Maps, and this one I love. I'm not really sure about the scale of this map. It's really interesting that these mushrooms look so big, and I think these are tree roots that align around this pathway. This is super interesting. I, I love that this map matches the autumn leaves effect so well that it almost looks like the map was drawn or, or painted with that autumn leaves effect in mind. And that is another animation that comes with Foundry. You don't have to add anything fancy to get that going for you. But I love that the, the scale of this map is not quite clear. Either these mushrooms and these tree roots are either ginormous or our player characters are incredibly small creatures. Maybe they got a, a reduce spell curse. I don't know. But, uh, but it's interesting to me how this plays out. I guess with the leaf size, this is in the, the middle of some ancient forest where the mushrooms are as big as regular trees and the trees are as big as mountains. I don't know. But it's, it's cool. Definitely well done. There's also an interesting thing about this map that I like. A lot of times you see an ambient light and that light being broken up by uh, different walls that change the way the lighting affects the scene. This scene is interesting in that uh, instead of going with that direction and adding walls that would block some of the light, uh, they instead just put these little narrowly focused light sources to simulate light shining through gaps and tree branches and foliage and i find that really interesting i haven't seen that done in a lot of maps for foundry i haven't seen that done in, in a lot of maps in general and i just i like it it might be a lot more common than than i'm giving it credit for but it's just it's just a cool little oh yeah that's a cool way to simulate that that makes sense i like it anyway excellent maps i love moonlight maps and uh will continue to use them in my own games Next up, we have Dr. Mapso, and this one is labeled as unofficial, so I'm not sure if the person posting these has taken them from somewhere or not. I, I don't know, but th these are really interesting maps. Uh, I picked the Gnome Village, I believe it's called. Yeah, the Gnome Village for, uh, for the showcase here, for the video. Even though this map style is a little more cartoony than I would prefer, the map is just kind of whimsical, and I can see it being used to convey a mood of, or an atmosphere of, of peacefulness and, uh, and safety. I can see a DM, even though it's not generally my style, I can see a DM using um, more 
dark, gritty scenery for the open wilderness where things are dangerous, uh, maybe dungeon scenes, that kind of thing, and then reverting back to a more playful, cartoony art style like this for their safe spaces, for their points of light, so to speak. It's just very interesting artwork, and I appreciate it. I, I like I like this, even though it's not really my style. Uh, I, I like it, and I can see myself using it for a more playful one-shot or, or to signify a lo location that's safer than the norm. Next up, we have Milby's Maps, and we are showing off the Assassin's Monastery, or Monastery, I guess, depending on where you're from but anyway uh this is a really well done map i really love that they have the little side cutaway view i feel like we don't get that as often in artwork as we used to that might just be my impression from some of the art that i've seen recently but it seems like as a as a dnd fantasy rpg community we have moved more toward these top-down battle maps and have neglected a lot of these side views. Even though these are probably more important for your gameplay piece, I love how these side view or cutaway maps give you kind of a scope and scale for the setting and scene itself before you get into the top-down where are my opponents for this combat kind of uh, play style. I also love that in this map, it's, it's multi-layered. There are many different layers and levels of this map that are all depicted in the same uh, in the same scene. And that's pretty convenient in my opinion. You won't have to worry about where your players are on this map. Uh, as far as like making sure they're on the right scene, um, if you have a combat that stretches across multiple levels of, of this stronghold, you don't have to worry about a player moving their token to a different scene and getting dropped out of the combat tracker, which is something that's happened to me before. On first glance, I don't like that there is so much unused space here that's a little off-putting to me, but at the same time, on a map like this where you have so many different like levels all depicted on the same map having a lot of blank space that is not used kind of leaves some of the mystery in the map if you use every little bit of space and it all uh, maps the different locations your players may explore a great deal of that setting and realize yeah we've already explored pretty much this whole thing but if you leave a lot of blank space in the map and you're ultimately using bits and pieces of it then your players are kind of left up in the air how much of that empty space that's covered by the fog of war is actually locations that we could explore and how much of it is just dead space in between uh, the, the locations that we could get to keeps a little of the mystery alive and I, I appreciate that Next up, we have the Spell Arena battle maps. This one in particular is the Dwarven Forge, uh, which I like not only because we need more Dwarven Forges in our game, but because I really miss playing D&D in person sometimes and using all my Dwarven Forge scenery and terrain. But anyway, we do have this really sweet map. Huge golden Dwarven head with an open mouth where you can see the burning coals and such. What I really like about this map is that it looks animated, but it's not. The artist for this map used some very creative uh, applications of lighting effects to make it appear as if this map was animated, when in reality it's actually just a flat image. Now, in the end, does it matter? I don't think so. I, I think having... Um, just a flat image that you're able to animate with, with the lighting effects that are included in the Foundry system is pretty sweet. Uh, a creative way of using those, and, um, and, and I'm impressed. Next up, we have tactical map battle maps. Uh, and in this scene, we have the skeleton of a giant fish. 
As I mentioned earlier, I love these maps that kind of help you tell a story, that give a DM some, some creative inspiration for trying to bring the setting alive. This is not just a giant fish on the edge of the water. This is a skeleton fish that is, one, huge, but also that somebody has decided to make a tent out of for some reason. Why is that? I don't know. Um, that's something to decide for your campaign, right? Why is there like part of a skeleton here? Is the rest of it gone? Is the rest of it buried in the mud there? Uh, what happened to this ship? Did the, did the fish eat it? I don't know. There's so much detail here and so many interesting things on this map that your players will ask about that you can then use to, to further develop your story. And I love maps that have those little quirky details. That said, with this map, I don't really like the rain effect that they tried to achieve here. It's not bad if you're planning to use this for a static map, and this may be... A map that is distributed on other platforms more often than Foundry, but for use in Foundry, you're probably better off finding some animated rain effects rather than this rain effect that's like built into the artwork. It's kind of distracting to me. But that said, I still like the art, still really sweet. Love how the battle map tells a story, or at least gets you started telling a story and filling in the gaps. Next up, we have the Mad Cartographer. With this little self-contained map, uh, this little cave section called A Strange Thing that doesn't appear to have any exits, at least not in the cave. Why are there no exits? Because it's a Stranger Things reference, obviously. So this is intended to be a part of the Upside Down that uh, alternate dimension in uh, Stranger Things where all the monsters come from. And you can see the, actually, let me turn here. Uh, you can see over here on the side of the cave, the Christmas lights and the writing on the wall, which is kind of a throwback to the scene in the first season where uh, Winona Ryder's character, I uh, can't remember her name, Will's mom, is trying to figure everything out. Very cool map, very cool reference to a pop culture uh, phenomenon, one of my favorite shows, and so I can't help but like this. Even though, even though as I've said several times before, and I'm kind of starting to feel a little repetitive, uh, even though it's a little cartoony for my taste, I, I still feel myself drawn to this just because of the Stranger Things references. Next up, we have the Ossenwald Starter Town by Tom Cartos. Uh, amazing work on this town here. This is the only map that I'm showcasing that is more of an overland map and less of a battle map. Unless you're trying to run an encounter or, or set of encounters like, for example, in Storm King's Thunder where you have giants attacking towns, um, then this could be a really cool starting point for a set of encounters like that. But the cool thing about this map is that lots of the different locations in this town are named and numbered here. And in the map pack, Tom includes the interiors of all those buildings. So it's really cool that you have all of these locations and know that each of them is thoroughly mapped out for players to explore in more detail if they decide to go there. All in all, excellent work, as is usual for Tom Cartos, whose work I have purchased on Roll20 before I made the switch over to Foundry and that I will continue to use in the future. So there you have it, folks, the 15 Foundry add-ons that are amazing sources of mapping artwork for your game. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, make sure you do all the liking and subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff that everybody asks for. If there's another source of artwork that you love that you'd like to give a shout out in the comments, I'd love to hear it and check out the artwork that you use in your games. And I'll be back soon with more Dungeons & Dragons content in the next video. See you soon.